I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. Every Chinese GoPro wannabe makes these unbelievable claims about great full HD or even 4K video recording for 60 bucks or whatever. But every single one of them that I have ever touched has been obviously converting the data from some horrendous 640 by 480 sensor, if you're lucky. Not to mention that many of them have a completely unusable UI. So, to call my expectations going into this review of the Yi Action Camera 2 low would be very generous. So then to say that I was blown away would be an understatement. Cooler Master's Mastercase Maker 5 features their freeform modular system allowing you to customize, adjust, and upgrade. Make it yours through the link in the video description. Let's start with the basics. I've got the selfie stick kit, which includes the Yi2 camera, as I'll be referring to it for the rest of the video, a battery, a kind of cheap feeling clip-on plastic shutter button, and a surprisingly robust selfie stick with a locking telescopic, well, I guess it's a stick, terminated with a quarter inch threaded post and a smartphone holder bracket that screws onto the one side down here at the bottom. It's not perfect. By reversing the gender of the threading or including an adapter, it could have been used to put a phone at the end of the stick when you are not using the E2, and the top swivel could be a bit more flexible, which would both be welcome improvements to its general usefulness, but I can't fault the selfie stick's build quality overall. Which brings us to the camera itself. It's pretty plasticky feeling. Another dollar or two would inspire more confidence in this product, but hey, as long as she's got it where it counts, right? At the bottom is the battery and micro SDXC compartment along with the female quarter inch mount. At the front is the f2.8 7 element 155 degree wide angle lens covering a Sony IMX 377 12.35 megapixel effective CMOS image sensor capable of 4K video or 12 megapixel stills along with a status indicator light. On the side is a micro USB charging port. On the top are the dual microphone ports and a speaker grill? Wait a minute, why would it need a speaker? Ah uh, yes, because on the back, the entire back of the unit is taken up by a 640 by 360 pixel wide format touchscreen. And if you've ever had a major video project riding on correctly framing a shot with a GoPro Hero 4 Black, you will surely appreciate this inclusion. And the implementation isn't half-assed either. The viewfinder is butter smooth and so is the menu navigation. So whether you're changing settings or reviewing a clip you just shot, all of which is doable over Wi-Fi with the GoPro app, by the way, eliminating this step, especially with a multicam setup where things can get jostled mid-shoot like we frequently find ourselves in, a lot of time and guesswork can be saved. And the E2 actually supports changing all those settings and previewing your shot live through their mostly stable app on your phone if you prefer that approach as well. Though none of that would be valuable if the shots from your perfectly positioned camera looked like trash, would it? So let's have a look at some 4K 30fps footage first compared to the only camera from GoPro's lineup that also shoots at that resolution, the Hero 4 Black. So overall, whether we're talking about low light performance, auto white balance, scene brightness change response, or really anything else, I was really impressed by this little camera. And that's without having access to some of the modes that only work at lower resolutions. The six axis electronic image stabilization that only works if you're shooting at resolutions below 4K and no higher than 60 frames per second is freaking cool and probably worth it for some people to drop all the way down to 1080p in order to take advantage of it. Though on that subject, I really wish that 2560 by 1440 was a shooting option since it would be a balance between having some sensor left to enable anti-shake and also having the ability to crop and punch in your footage. Though I'm not going to deduct too many marks for this given how impressive this camera is at half of what we paid for the action cams that we use for most of our projects. With the biggest shocker yet to come, 
the battery life. We are used to taking a caseload of replacement batteries on any GoPro shoot, and switching over to a fleet of Y2s would cut in half the frequency with which we need to replace them, with sound quality being yet another strong point. I mean, sure, it's not perfect, it's not as good as a lav mic or a boom mic, but when you're speaking directly into the camera from selfie distance, even with a fair amount of background noise, it's a fast and easy way to get surprisingly usable audio. So I'm in China, courtesy of ZTE, ZTE, I can never keep track of what the Canadian way is. Check out this hotel room. All right, press conference is over. Time to uh, join back up with Brandon and see where he's at on B-roll for the ca camera with the camera. As long as you're not using the waterproof case, though I've yet to find any action cam that has really solved that problem. On that note, their 40 meter polycarbonate and glass waterproof housing is not included with the kit we got. But while I don't have pricing for it yet, based on the last generation Yi camera, it should land in the $10 to $30 range. It doesn't allow the use of the touchscreen, obviously, but the top button lets you do all of the essentials. Power, start, stop, record, and power off. And this is great. It uses a GoPro compatible mounting system, which I guess leads us right into the usual issue with any action cam that isn't a GoPro the relatively immature accessory ecosystem. Now, some stuff that's not available for the E2 can be ignored. The waterproof case accessory makes it compatible with many GoPro mounts, including head, chest, and even scuba suit, etc. But the first party one anyway, lacks a more acoustically friendly backing for audio recording while using those GoPro accessories. And I also don't see an obvious solution for non-mounting related accessories like external battery chargers. Nothing seems to be available at this time, meaning that you will need to charge your batteries in your camera, which is fine for casual users, but pros are gonna want something a little bit beefier so they can charge more of them at a time. However, if that drawback in your mind is easily overcome by the price, the screen, the footage quality, and that quarter inch mount, I won't entirely disagree with you. Of course, it remains to be seen if GoPro will come storming back with the Hero 5 lineup later this year. In the meantime though, I'll be watching the E2 very, very closely. TunnelBear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse the web privately and enjoy, well, a more open internet. And the best part about it is that it is easy to use and free for your first 500 megs of data. But what does it do exactly? Well, when you hit the button that turns TunnelBear on, two things happen. Number one is that your connection gets encrypted with AES 256-bit encryption. And number two is that based on whatever you selected in a dropdown up to 20 different countries, you will appear to the websites and web services that you use as though you are browsing from that other country. So you could be from the UK or America or whatever the case may be. Now, if you try out TunnelBear, we've got a link in the video description, that's tunnelbear.com slash LTT, and you go, wow, gee, this is really great. You can actually save 10% on an unlimited plan by using that link. So again, that's tunnelbear.com slash LTT. So thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do. But if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button, or even consider supporting us directly using our affiliate code to shop on Amazon, instructions up there, buying a cool shirt like this one, or with a direct monthly contribution through our community forum linked in the video description. Now that you're done doing all that stuff, you're probably wondering, hmm, gee, what should I watch next? Oops, everything's fine. So click that little button in the top right corner to check out our latest video over on Channel Super Fun. It'll be fun, maybe even super fun.